Hello, and welcome to a special Boise mayoral runoff edition of Viewpoint. We are here because the city mandates that the leading mayoral candidate vote getter get over 50% of the vote to win the seat. On November 5th, City Council President Lauren McLean garnered 45.7% of the vote. Sitting Mayor Dave Beter ended the night just over 30%. That triggered a runoff election, which will take place on Tuesday, December 3rd. Coming up next, we're going to go one-on-one -on -one with the two finalists for the capital city's highest seat. Their views on some of Boise's biggest issues differ greatly. Those issues include major project proposals, including a sports stadium, a downtown library originally projected to cost over $80 million, and the Air Force's F-35 fighter jet program coming to Boise. They will lay out those views so that you can make an important decision come election day. The candidates' one-on-ones were done at separate times. The format's simple. Each candidate asked the same three questions in the first half of the program. They had no more than five minutes to do so. And then in the second half of the program, they were asked questions directly related to them and their campaigns. Again, five minutes to do that. Boise City Council President Lauren McLean and Boise Mayor Dave Beter, in their own words, next on a special Boise mayoral election runoff edition of Viewpoint. It starts now. From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. And we welcome Boise City Council President Lauren McLean, who by a coin toss that was held earlier, will get the first five minutes in the first segment and the second five minutes in the next segment. A timekeeper is off camera to keep you abreast of the time. And we begin today with your top two priorities for the city. What are they? Well, hello, Mark. Thanks so much for having me today. Really appreciate the opportunity. My top two priorities are things that I've been talking about since the beginning of this election, which is addressing the affordability crisis that we're experiencing in our city and making progress on building a transportation system in this region to address traffic and congestion that just keeps getting worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. You and your opponent have differing views on major proposals including, notably, the stadium project and the library project, as well as the F-35 program and the possibility of it coming to Gowan Field. Explain your stance on those big projects for Boise and how you believe it differs from your opponent. Happy to, thanks. I'll start with F-35s. You know, the environmental impact statement from the Air Force came out this summer and made it clear that nearly 300 homes, existing homes and residents would be I'm severely impacted by the F-35s if they were at Gowan, um, as well as schools impacted by F-35s. And with that information, it became clear to me that the city should not be spending money to lobby for that airplane in our own community. While it's still very possible to support the servicemen and women and the current mission there, and seek different ways to grow the mission um, as we move forward in time without impacting the lives of our residents and existing affordable housing that we need so badly. The library and the stadium? Yeah. The stadium is just not a priority of mine. After 16 years of the mayor talking about the stadium, the needs of this community have changed. And city dollars, public dollars, should be going to address urgent needs like affordable housing and transportation at a time like this as we're growing. And finally, on the library, I believe in the power of libraries and the importance of them in our community. The difference where we diverged was my belief and respect of our constitutional right as citizens to put ballot measures on the ballot, recognizing that citizens who care deeply about our community and were frustrated and feeling shut out of the process and so put questions on the ballot. I believe that we can have both a library project that's celebrated by the community and respect um, the process that our residents went through asking us to put that to a vote in the future because his camp is quick to point out that you originally voted in favor of the library project. And I've been clear all along that I was involved with the library project and starting in January when the public started pushing back and asking us questions and asking us to reconsider, there were opportunities that we should have done that. Um, and as mayor, um, when you were leading a project, it's, it's on you 
to share your vision, listen to the public, and bring those together. And moving forward, as we talk about a library downtown, I really look forward to leading that process because I know that we can come up with a library that provides opportunity, access to education for people of all ages that's celebrated by all of our residents. Let's go back to something you just touched on. The homeless situation is something most Northwest cities are dealing with in a big way. Boise has no camping ordinance uh, that has been bouncing around in federal courts for a decade. What do you believe is uh, the answer to our homeless situation? Sure. The, the ordinance has been bouncing around the courts for more than a decade. And we can prevent homelessness and prevent camps um, in ways that we're already doing. And I want to be, make it very clear that I don't support camps. The videos out there circulating saying that the statements being made are really disappointing and because I've always been very clear that camps are not safe for those in them or for the public. We need to do more to prevent homelessness. Um, evictions are on the rise because of our affordability crisis. The city has to address affordable housing to prevent homelessness. So we work on prevention. And then we need to build on the partnerships with the great hardworking organizations in our community already that are seeking to serve those experiencing homelessness. When you connect with those experiencing homelessness with the support services that they need with the goal of moving them into shelter and later into a home and into a job, it's a much better day um, than using the court process and putting them into the criminal justice process, which will make it harder in the long run for them to find housing and jobs. And that's not what we want. I know that this city can do better and is already showing that it's possible to prevent camps um, compassionately and in accordance with Boise values of justice and kindness. It's time for Mayor Beter now and we'll begin with the same question. Your top two priorities for the city of Boise. Well, uh, growth is the biggest issue that we're dealing with. Uh, and I'm, uh, I've dealt with growth at one of the highest growth uh, times, even higher than this, when I first came into office in those first uh, couple years. Then I experienced the largest decline, the biggest recession that any of us have ever seen. And now we're back before, so I, I can handle that. We can deal with that. And affordable housing and, and homelessness is the issue that comes out of growth. And I am the best position to handle that. We have handled growth and directed it in a way that serves us all. Compact, walkable, bikeable developments with a mix of uses where you are, with libraries and parks located where you are. So if you have to drive at all, you have to drive short distances. But growth brings uh, tough issues like like affordable housing and homelessness. Uh, we have done more for those less fortunate than any city, uh, than Boise has ever done. And really, we're a model for cities all over. They come and they say, what are you doing that's different because you're doing it right? And that is, uh, you know, we have uh, more housing opportunities for them. We have a detox center. We have uh, programs for, uh, for family homeless, but we, but we can't have our camps. We can't uh, allow that. That's what distinguishes us from Portland and Seattle and San Francisco. And that's the biggest difference between me and my opponent. Well, you and your opponent do have different views on other things as well. I'm talking about the F-35s, the stadium, the library. Explain your stance on big projects for Boise. Well, uh, my opponent and I agree on the library that it's an important project for the future of the city. Uh, we're not going to bring the current project forward, and I've announced that. But she pushed very hard to have that project, to have the architect, to have the size of the project. Uh, she's four things until they get tough, and then she runs uh, for the exits. Uh, I've said we should bring that project forward. We should start anew. We should reset it. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's an important distinction because she's for it until it gets hard. Uh, the sports park is a, is a totally different thing. We have a private developer uh, that's bringing that development, and uh, whether he does or not, or they do or not, is uh, we, we remain to be seen. The F-35, we need a mission for Gowan Field, $160 million of economic activity, not just in the city, but in the valley. And she was for it, in private, for it, until, again, it got hard. Uh, she says she wants a mission we don't know what that mission is going to be. The A-10 is a mission that we fought to retain, along with cities and, 
and military people all around the country. Thankfully, it is still there. We don't know what the next mission is going to be. We don't know if it's the F-35 or the F-16, F-15. It could be, and the A-10 could last uh, many more years. Uh, but a mission, it would be our ninth mission back since when Jimmy Stewart learned to fly at Cowan Field. Uh, it's an important part of our country and it's a really important part of our city and our valley. And she kind of wants to have it both ways, which is uh, what she usually tries to do. A little over a minute left in this segment. Mayor, you touched on the homeless situation and what a priority it is for you. Yeah. But it's going through the federal courts and has been for well over a decade. Is there a good answer? Yes, there is. You do all these positive things. N new housing projects. Uh, we have a 45-unit development. We have a veterans uh, development. We have a detox center where the homeless go to get help. Uh, we have uh, programs for for family homeless, but you can't allow camps. That undermines everything we're trying to do. It's not good for the homeless. It's awful for the community. And that's what separates us from cities all around the country. Vancouver, Washington just rescinded their ordinance. Within a matter of weeks, they had 150 people in the camp. It's not the way to go. It's a last resort after we've tried everything else, but we have to have that authority. And I'm for going to the U.S. Supreme Court and retaining that because that's why Boise has clean, safe streets uh, and homeless programs that help. We are a model. We need to retain that. The status quo is working. We shouldn't change that. All right, about 30 seconds left. Is that the hardest thing that you think the mayor can do? Deal Toughest with the homeless? thing I've ever had to do was right. give the order to take the camp out. I lost friends. I lost sleep. It was the right thing to do. It's proven itself up to be the right thing to do. Uh, she won't make that call. She said she won't make that call. That's a big distinction. You're watching to a special Boise mayoral runoff edition of Viewpoint. More after this. Welcome back. We just wrapped up five minutes each with both of the candidates for Boise mayor who answered the same three questions. It's time now for five minutes with each on an open forum type formatted directly for the individual candidate. And let us begin, Mayor, with how you interpret the voters passing both of the propositions to bring a vote on major projects like the stadium and the library, maybe the F-35s to a vote of the people. How did you view that decision? Well, it's not surprising, uh, uh, given that they put it on the ballot. And, and, you know, there's some humility involved in this, mm -hmm. that we have uh, what we believe are great projects. and. Uh, the fact that they want to vote is is fine, really, in the end. The uh, We believe they're great projects, especially the library. The library is fundamental to what we do. We have four great branch libraries that we were able to build. The main library has three to 4,000 people visit every day. It is a substandard library. We want to uh, improve it. It also feeds the branches. Uh, we're excited. We're going to reset, take another look, invite people in. We have their attention now. Uh, you can scale about, you can scale down a project, you, you can't scale it up. Mm -hmm. uh, my opponent was for even going bigger than this, or certainly as big. Uh, now she's sort of running uh, away. Uh, I think it's a great project, uh, and, and one that we're going to move forward with if I'm lucky to, uh, to be reelected. Folks have asked us to ask you, um, you wrote a character letter that was read in court in support of former Boise priest Thomas Fauché, convicted, of course, of possessing and distributing child pornography. You received pushback from many in the community over that. Looking back, do you regret writing that letter? Well, let me say, Mark, that uh, Tom Fauché is where he should be. He should be in prison, and he is. And I'm not going to quibble with that. Uh, that's not the Tom Fauché that I knew. When my parents were killed, uh, and I wish that wouldn't happen to anybody, that you lose two family members in one accident. He was uh, instrumental in, in helping me and my family get our feet under us and, and gather from that. And I was asked to provide that context to his situation, and I did that. But to weaponize that against me, to politicize that against me, uh, is frankly appalling. And this shouldn't be a part of this discussion. It wasn't at the mayor, as the mayor that I spoke. His defense attorney chose to bring it into open court. Otherwise, that's among the most protected communications that's all I did. I'm not quibbling with the decision of the judge. 
again, but to make that uh, a political issue and weaponize that against me uh, is frankly appalling. We originally wanted, as you know, this to be a candidate debate. You agreed to it. Lauren McLean denied our request, saying that she felt like there had been enough of them and didn't want to continue with them and used the word drama. Where do you come down on, not, on her not wanting to engage? Well, she's, she's afraid, Mark, frankly. We had seven debates, but we had seven people in those debates. And, and our positions get lost in the shuffle of that. And really, it was six piling on to me. Uh, I wasn't afraid to go then, and I'm not afraid to go now. We had a great debate just last week at City Club, standing room only, bursting at the seams. People want to hear our positions on the issues, uh, and she won't come to another. And it makes me wonder, what is she afraid of? What positions does she want? Does she not want people to know? Uh, we, we know that people want to hear more. Uh, and I was, I was great. Channel 7 is watched by everybody. Uh, I was more than willing to come. Uh, but she is not, and she, she premised her candidacy on transparency and talking about the issues, and now she won't do that. Uh, and that, that should be telling uh, to the people watching this, uh, why won't she do this? What is she afraid of? What positions? You know me. You don't know her, and I don't think she wants you to know her. Today we had six current and former city council members stand up and say, we want me to have four more years. They served with both of us and they don't think she should be the mayor. Uh, these are the things that people will learn if we engage this. Uh, I'm happy to be here at least uh, talking about the issues. One minute, Mayor, uh, finally here. What's the bottom line for you in vying for another term in the mayor's office? What's the we bottom need line? to move the city forward. Uh, growth is an issue. I've handled growth. Tough decisions are the issue. Leadership and tough decisions. And I've shown over and over that I'll make those decisions for the long-term best interest of the city. Uh, Lauren McLean has the city's interest at heart. I'm not saying that she doesn't, but she's shown that she can't make tough decisions. Her peers, her colleagues do not want her to be mayor. They've seen us both in action. Tough decisions like, again, we've done more for the homeless than anybody, but we can't allow camps. That is an important issue of uh, additional leadership, a tough decision. Uh, she won't make it, and she said that she will not make that decision. Mayor, thank you for your time. Thanks, Mark. Good to be here. It should be pointed out that KTVB invited you to take part in a forum debate, however it was going to be, with Mayor Beter, and you declined. You sent a notice out saying that you were not going to do any more one-on-one -on -one forums with him. Um, some in the beater camp claimed by doing so, you're manipulating the election process. How do you respond to that claim? The, I appreciated the invitation. We tried for quite a while to find a date that, and a time that would work. We had eight debates in the first section, the first part of the election. I attended all eight of those. One was not attended by the mayor and then had previously scheduled City Club. And I think that you had a member of your team with us on election night. That evening we started filling out our calendar with listening sessions with volunteer events, so it became harder to schedule. I was happy to have that civil debate at City Club and believe that we've really discussed most of the issues. And rather than going through the performance of debates that even we saw at City Club, which was somewhat disappointing, I think it's most important now that we connect personally with voters and I've been continuing to do that at the doors, but even more so in listening sessions, unscripted without rules, being directly accountable to people and sharing with them my thoughts as we lead up to the election, which is actually starting on today mm -hmm. with early vote. Mm -hmm. I, I want to give you an opportunity to clear something up that, again, uh, their camp uh, readily claims that you did vote for the library project, and you're saying that's only partially correct. Well, we, we voted to pay the architect. Um, I was involved with the selection of the architect and the selection of the design as part of the committee that did that and haven't shied away from that because I believed that the library was so important and I want to see a project that's worthy of our community. There's a difference in that when we hear from the public that they're frustrated with the design, that they're frustrated with the project, I think it's on the executive, the mayor, to reflect on that and to determine how to share your a vision, 
connect with the public and move a process forward. And I'm confident that we can do that moving forward um, with a new conversation around the library and how important it is, but recognizing and respecting the will of the people with the vote two weeks ago. We hear the word transparency a lot in your campaigning. Um, is that derived from what you see as a lack of transparency at City Hall currently? I heard loud and clear from the public for the last two, three years that they wanted more access to their elected officials. So when I became president of the city council, we started town halls and went around the community to have open and accessible conversations and heard often in the last couple years too when things became um, more conflicting that folks felt shut out of the process, didn't know how to influence the process, and wanted to see more transparency. And I've thrived on accessibility and connecting directly with voters. I have texting line and a new one actually, it's 208-278-7891 that voters will be able to text me to have conversations even once I'm elected, if I'm elected mayor. Um, but that connection, kind of looking back to our past as we think about how we move forward and grow is really important to the public and to me as an individual. So much of your campaigning has been door to door, knocking on doors on the Boise bench in the North End. Uh, what has been the, one of the overriding themes that you have heard from voters while knocking on doors? The, this has been such a fun campaign because of those conversations that I'm having at doors and in listening sessions. And we've been on the Boise bench in the North End, but we've also been in Southwest Boise and Northwest Boise and Southeast Boise and Harris Ranch. We've hit over 70,000 doors and I've hit several thousand myself. And those conversations are so similar in all of our neighborhoods. While we often will think that we're different because of where we've chosen to live in the city, I found that the concerns that, and the recognition that our city's at a crossroads and the concerns that we need new solutions and fresh perspective to address affordability so that folks who come here or who grew up here can find a home with the job that they have or they can stay in the home that they've always lived in. Um, and then this, this understanding that traffic has gotten worse and we have to make progress on transportation really are through lines um, throughout all those conversations. And in addition to the doors, as I mentioned, we've held, um, I think we're approaching 35 listening sessions with anywhere from 40 to 70 people at them. And those questions too are so often very similar. What do we do next? We love this community so much. We're at a crossroads and need new leadership. And it's for that reason that I really hope to have um, the honor of the public's vote on December 3rd. We have about 15 seconds before your time is up. Should it not work out, could you work with the mayor at City Hall going forward? Oh, of course. It would be my honor to do that. We had that question at City Club readily. I love this community. And that means after it's on the person who loses and the person who wins to help move us forward collaboratively. Lauren McLean, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Really appreciate it. We'll be right back. The runoff election for Boise Mayor is coming up Tuesday, December 3rd. And as is the case with all elections, we have the details on your polling location and the stories on the candidates on our election guide that you can find easily at ktvb.com. And then, as soon as the votes begin coming in, we'll have the latest results online on our website and on our app. And you can see our stories on the Caldwell City Council runoff election as well. That will also be decided on Tuesday, December 3rd. If you missed any of this program, you can go to our website where you can see it in its entirety. In the meantime, thanks for watching this special Decision 2019 Boise Mayor Edition of Viewpoint.